Yeah, President Trump turning Mueller's report into a political advantage tonight, but will he continue to use it on the 2020 campaign trail? Hmm. Time for tonight's power panel. Principal of Clifton Consulting, Marjorie Clifton. The director of strategic communications for the Trump 2020 t campaign, Mark Lauder, and Fox News contributor Guy Benson. Welcome to all of you. Hey, Shannon. Thank okay, you. so the Wall Street Journal writes an opinion piece. This is Carl Rove writing for the Wall Street Journal. The headline is Move On from Robert Mueller, Mr. President. He says Team Trump should use the Mueller report to pivot to issues like the economy and the opioid crisis that matter to swing voters who will decide the 2020 presidential election. President should focus his time voice and tweets on the roaring economy, impressive job creation, and bigger paychecks. That said, Guy, I don't think that he's going to resist this so-called victory lap. <laughs> and he probably shouldn't. Let's be honest. I'm all for pivoting to issues. I've always said I wished he was a bit more disciplined in his messaging and sticking to certainly the economy, which is a high point of his presidency. But this is a cloud that was manufactured, that hung over the presidency for two years, and now on the central question, Robert Mueller has said that there was no collusion, no coordination with the Russians. I think he is well within his rights to point that out to the American people loudly and often and point out the number of people who were wrong. And frankly, I don't necessarily think if he plays it right, that is politically bad advice either, because there are plenty of independents out there who might have been looking at the president with a jaundiced eye saying, I'm not too excited about this Russia thing. Is he guilty? I'm not sure. Now that he's exonerated on that major point, he might be able to bring them over while playing off the media that was so deeply dishonest and I think irresponsible throughout this entire imbroglio. Yeah, I mean, he did talk about the media tonight, as he always does in these rallies, but he talked about immigration and building the wall and the economy and all kinds of other things. Here he is talking about um, what he says is the best two-year start for any president, probably in history. <laughs> the economy is roaring. The ISIS caliphate is defeated 100%. And after three years of lies and smears and slander, the Russia hoax is finally dead. So Marjorie, he's got a lot of good talking points when it comes to the economy and record low unemployment, especially among groups like African-Americans and Hispanics and women. Um, he does have some issues that he can campaign on. Well, health care being one that he came right out of the gate, surprising mm -hmm. people on, and, and that being one of the biggest issues when it came to what moved swing voters was actually health care. Democrats especially paid a lot of attention to that. And if he's looking at targeting audiences, I think that's one that frightened a lot of people because his approach was to repeal health care. Um, and what we know that is the pre-existing condition uh, clause that is in the existing ACA is something that's really important to a lot of people. So what is this plan for replacing? But, you know, on the front of, of whether he continues on this Mueller uh, binding and, and sort of his being exonerated, I think the thing that he needs to take pause on is there still is a 300-page report looming. Mm -hmm. And so while there weren't criminal charges, I think a lot of those independents that, that Karl Rove and others are talking about are people that don't look at issues as black and white. That's kind of why they live in the gray, why they're independent. And so they're thinking a little bit more about, OK, yes, there may not have been criminal charges, but there was interference in the election by the Russians. Mm -hmm. That has been proven. And there's some pretty close ties to the campaign. So that's still in that gray area. So I think I would caution him on going too strong on that issue. So, Mark, your official response then as part of this campaign? Well, I can tell you that the president is going to continue to talk about all of the above uh, because of the lies uh, that the Democrats and many of their allies in the mainstream media for the last two and a half years overshadowed so many great accomplishments in the economy. The defeat of ISIS over the weekend, last weekend, got scant coverage, if any at all, because of the focus on the Mueller probe and the, up and, and the AG's letter. So the president's going to talk about that. He's going to remind people that they've been lied to for two years. And then he's going to remind them about the economic success that many of them haven't heard of. In Michigan, just in the last two weeks, I think there have been about 7,000 auto jobs that have been announced that are coming back to Michigan. And some of those jobs are coming into our country that were planned outside of the country. So these are great things for the president to celebrate. He's got a long time to be able to make this case. And I think as more and more Americans are feeling the bigger paychecks, are feeling more comfortable with those jobs, the low unemployment, the more and more we're going to see mm -hmm. people giving a fresh look at President Trump and his record. And why would you want to go to socialism?
Well, he brought that up tonight, too, and, and many other things. So we do want to talk about some more of the, uh, the rally tonight with you guys. If you will stick around and come back, panel, thank you very much.